Dear friends, let us discuss about the subsartorial canal and subsartorial plexus. Just think, what do you understand by subsartorial? The subsartorial canal is also known as adductor canal. And what is this plexus, subsartorial plexus? It's a plexus of nerves. And the learning objectives for these topics is for the adductor canal or subsartorial canal, you should know where it is located and from where to where it extends, and what are its boundaries and what are the contents. And this should be followed by its clinical importance. Coming to the subsartorial plexus, you should have an idea where it is located and what are the contributions for this plexus. As you know, this is a narrow plexus. And what is the area that is supplied by this plexus? See the picture. Here you are seeing the adductor canal and identify these muscles. You are seeing the muscle vastus medialis, part of the quadriceps femoris muscle in the front of thigh. And you are seeing the sartorius muscle. This is the sartorius muscle. And then you will see the medial compartment which contains the muscles, that is the adductor group of muscles. And the area which you are seeing is uh, the middle part of the thigh. Middle one third of medial side of the thigh you are seeing. And you can identify the femoral artery and the nerve. That is the femoral canal. Now, what is adductor canal? And where it is located? What is its length? And what is its extent? You should be able to answer. And the adductor canal is also known as Hunter's Canal by the name of a surgeon who has performed surgeries in this canal. Then it is also known as Subsartorial Canal because it is adjacent to the sartorius muscle. You will see the canal. That is why you can see it here. Then what is its shape? So it is conical in shape. And what does it contain? It is a narrow, conical, aponeurotic and intermuscular tunnel. So it is between the muscles. And its location is middle one third of medial th side of the thigh, deep to the sartorius muscle. And it is about 15 centimeters in length. What is the extent of the adductor canal and what is its importance? Let us see. In this picture, you can see the femoral triangle, which you, all of you are familiar with it, and then which is uh, bounded by the adductor longus muscle and the sartorius muscle. And this is the base of femoral triangle, this is the apex of the femoral triangle. So, from the apex of the femoral triangle starts the adductor canal and then where does it end? It terminates at the adductor hiatus. So, what is that adductor hiatus? It is a opening between the adductor muscle and the femur. So, that is between the adductor part and then the hamstring part of the adductor magnus muscle where it gets attached there is the adductor hiatus so it extends from the apex of femoral triangle to the adductor hiatus in this picture you can see the femoral triangle and its continuation the adductor canal so what is the importance of this adductor canal this is a passage for for the passage of the structures between the anterior aspect or front of thigh and posterior aspect of the leg. That is the popliteal fossa. And what are those structures that are passing or running between these two 
areas or the femoral vessels that is the femoral artery and femoral vein so which will be extending from the femoral triangle to popliteal fossa now that we know about the location of the adductor canal on the medial aspect of thigh in its middle one third what are its boundaries let us look into that so this is the anterolateral boundary this is the anterolateral boundary which is formed by vastus medialis muscle and then there is the posterior boundary or floor of it which is formed by the two muscles the adductor longus above and adductor magnus below then you are seeing the anterolaterally the roof of the adductor canal so this roof is formed by the muscle the sartorius from which it has got its name subsartorial and then there is a fibrous membrane which is running deep to the sartorius which you are seeing this line and this is extending from vastus medialis to the adductor longus and then this is a fibrous roof fibrous sheath which is called the fascia vasto adductoria because it is stretching between this two muscles and then there will be a plexus of nerves here that is known as the subsartorial plexus of nerves so this is the boundaries of the adductor canal oh now you understood the location and then the boundaries of the adductor canal and the extent of it with which you are familiar now now see the picture where again you can revise the boundaries of it the adductor longus behind or posteriorly and you can see the laterally the vastus medialis muscle and then the roof the sartorius and then the fascia vasto adductoria this is the membrane stretching between the vastus medialis and adductor longus and you are seeing the subsartorial plexus of nerves you are seeing here and the contents of which that is within the adductor canal is the femoral artery femoral vein the saphenous nerve and then you are seeing the nerve to vastus medialis the subsartorial plexus of nerves and then the other one is the descending genicular artery these are the contents of the adductor canal now let us look at the details of the contents the femoral artery it will be entering the apex of the femoral triangle and it will travel through this adductor canal through its entire length and it will be lying between the saphenous nerve and the femoral vein which you can see here and how it will leave the canal by passing through the adductor hiatus and in the canal the femoral artery gives branches they are the muscular branches before it leaves the canal it will give the descending genicular branch coming to the femoral vein it lies posterior to the femoral artery in the upper part and when it comes down it is lateral to the femoral artery in the lower part the other content is the saphenous nerve you can see it so the saphenous nerve is crossing anterior to the femoral artery from the lateral to medial side lateral to medial side remember the boundary on the lateral side the vastus medialis you are seeing okay and how the saphenous nerve will leave it it will leave the adductor canal by piercing the fibrous roof before leaving the adductor canal it will give a branch that is the infra patellar branch that pierces the sartorius muscle and joins the patellar plexus that's about the saphenous nerve 
then the other one is the nerve to vastus medialis so what is this nerve to vastus medialis it is the thickest muscular branch of the femoral nerve the saphenous nerve is the longest cutaneous branch of the femoral nerve so the nerve to vastus medialis is the thickest muscular branch of femoral nerve and where does it lie it is lateral to femoral artery it will enter the vastus medialis in the upper part of adductor canal then the other content is the subsartorial plexus now there is this spiral course of femoral vein and saphenous nerve in relation to femoral artery in the adductor canal why it is because of medial rotation of lower limb during its development so there is embryological basis for the spiral course of femoral vein and saphenous nerve in relation to femoral artery now let us look into the subsartorial plexus which is a content of subsartorial canal and then we will see where it is located what are its contributions and then what is the area of supply then if you see the location of this plexus so before that look at the picture you can see the adductor canal then the contents femoral artery the femoral vein the saphenous nerve the nerve to vastus medialis and in this picture you can see the descending genicular artery and then the you are seeing the nerves that are passing through the roof that is the saphenous nerve and then piercing the roof the saphenous artery you are seeing and here you are seeing a plexus of nerves this is the subsartorial nerve plexus in relation with the fascial roof of the adductor canal there is the fascia vasto adductoria then you, this is the sartorius muscle you are seeing and then there is the obturator nerve the anterior division and then the medial femoral cutaneous nerve or the medial cutaneous nerve of thigh which is uh, piercing the sartorius muscle similarly the anterior division of obturator nerve you are seeing it and if you see the location so the plexus of nerves over the facial roof of adductor canal are called the subsartorial plexus and they are underneath the sartorius muscle the contribution for the plexus is by the medial cutaneous nerve of thigh which you can see here then there is the anterior division of obturator nerve the saphenous nerve is also giving one so this is the subsartorial plexus and what is the area that is separated by it there is the deep fascia of thigh or fascia lata over the subsartorial canal and skin or separated by this subsartorial plexus of nerves hope you have understood about the location and then the nerves contributing for the subsartorial plexus and area of supply by the subsartorial plexus now after discussing about the adductor canal and then the subsartorial plexus of nerves let us look into the clinical importance of adductor canal so the adductor canal is used for injecting the local anesthetics to block the saphenous nerve either in isolation or together with the nerve to vastus medialis so what is the purpose of this administration of local anesthetic is to provide sensory anesthesia for certain surgical procedures in relation to the distal part of thigh or femur on the knee and leg on the medial side what is the anatomical landmark for locating the saphenous nerve is the sartorius muscle and femoral artery 
Other clinical importance of the erector canal is erector canal compression syndrome, which is a neurovascular bundle that will be entrapped within the erector canal. But it is a rare condition and usually it is due to the hypertrophy of the adjacent muscles, especially the vastus medialis muscle. And it is more common in the young males and it produces symptoms of claudication because of occlusion of the femoral artery, which is more common or it can produce neurological symptoms because of entrapment of the saphenous nerve. So that is about the adductor canal compression syndrome. The other clinical importance of the adductor canal is the ligation of the femoral artery in the cases of popliteal aneurysm. So they perform a surgical procedure when there is aneurysm of the popliteal artery. So then they will expose the femoral artery in the erector canal and ligate it. Because this part of the femoral artery is healthy when compared to that part of the artery immediately above the popliteal aneurysm, which when they ligate will split when they tie the artery. So that's why they perform the ligation of femoral artery in the adductor canal for popliteal aneurysm and this procedure was first performed by Dr. John Hunter. That's why this is called the Hunter's canal. And then the collateral circulation will be established after the ligation of femoral artery in the erector canal via the arterial anastomosis around the knee joint. So, hope you have understood about the erector canal and subsartorial plexus, the extent, the boundaries, the contents and the clinical 